Welcome to the Assembly of Champions broadcast. I'm your host, Larry W. Robinson. My guest today is Terry A. Weems Sr. He is the CEO of Terry A. Weems Ministries, where the mandate is to impart, empower, and impact. Now, he is an internationally recognized shifter who has shifted the human potential of people live, people's lives globally. His current book is titled Shifting and Lifting and Engaging Metamorpho. I can't wait for him to explain what that means. And, uh, well, first of all, Terry A. Weems Sr., welcome to the Assembly of Champions broadcast, my friend. It is an honor, and I do thank you for this opportunity. All right. Now, you know i got to ask, what is a metamorpho? Wow, I am so glad you asked. <laughs> I, I uh, encountered this question so much after uh, the book came out. But a metamorpho is simply uh, a transformation. Okay. It's a change. Okay. And most time when I talk about it, man of God, I uh, remind people that all of us are familiar with the metamorpho because like myself, so many people have grew up on cartoons like Transform uh, Transformers, The Incredible Hulk, He-Man, Superman. And all of these characters showed us a metamorpho. Mm -hmm. Clark Kent would enter a phone booth and he would come out Superman. Mm -hmm. The Incredible Hulk was uh, Bill. And uh, upon uh, getting mad, he would... Uh, uh, change, uh, transform into uh, a Hulk. Uh, so the metamorpho it, it, it deals with it deals with transformation. It deals with change, uh, and in and in that we will discover uh, shifting in the metamorpho. All right. Okay. Well, I'm excited. You know, the title um, what we're going to talk about today is how to shift and lift our lives to our greatest potential. I believe that many people, especially in the body of Christ, are living beyond their privilege um, and just really living lives of, uh, as one author say, quiet desperation. Well, we want to help shift them out of that and to live to our greatest potential. So that's what I want to talk about today, how to shift and lift our lives to our greatest potential. Oh, before we do the work, can our listeners go to get a copy of your book? They can actually, they can visit my website. TerryAWeems.org, mm -hmm. or they can go to Amazon. The book is uh, available on Amazon. Just type in Shifting and Lifting, and it will appear, and they'll be able to purchase it there. All right. Shifting and Lifting, Engaging and Metamorpho. Again, Terry A. Weems Sr., welcome to the Assembly of Champions broadcast. Thank you again, sir. All right. So how to shift and lift our lives to our greatest potential? What are what, some of the first things that we need to actually do or um, the, the mindset? What do we need to do to shift our lives from where we are to where we want to go? Well, the first thing, the, the shift has to uh, begin in the mind. Because okay. if it does not happen in the mind, uh, it's not going to be experienced in no other aspect of our life. I just uh, came back from Savannah and I preached the message, uh, it's a mind thing. Uh, the mind is so vitally important uh, to shifting. Uh, shifting also is a choice. Uh, mm -hmm. It can't be forced on you. You have to choose uh, to shift. Uh, there have to, and, and, to, and to change, there have to be a desire to change. So many people are stuck uh, in, in the norm, but they're, they're, they're stuck because they're comfortable. And then in some instances, man, they've got, that's all they know. They have, not, they have not been challenged or provoked to come out of their comfort zone. So it has to be a desire. And then many times pain, believe it or not, motivates people to change. God will use pain to motivate them to change. So in actuality, pain is not always negative or it should not uh, be handled in a negative way. Because it's necessary. God will use pain. David even spoke uh, in this regard when he said it was good for me that I was afflicted. It, 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 it was good for me because before I was afflicted, I did what I wanted to do. I was uncontrollable. I was unmanageable. And uh, so God allowed pain. And I, and I never forget this, if I may, that I often tell people that affliction is God's prescription. God will prescribe affliction to get us from places and people, ideologies, thoughts, old habits, antiquated worship, antiquated methods uh, to where we are uh, really should be uh, even in life.
All right. What are what are some ways that we can to get in, uh, gauge or measure our lives at this current point to say, okay, I need to shift and live to the next level? When when you take a uh, inventory of a life, when an individual takes an inventory, or I should say, a when they conduct a internal audit of themselves, and they realize that their life uh, is not up to par. Uh, their life is, they're not seeing a productive life or mm -hmm. a fruitful life. Uh, it's frustrated. Uh, they're not seeing what they envision concerning themselves. That should tell an individual that they need to shift. And I also would like to say that I discovered it even in the book, uh, as they go and purchase the book, they will learn that I speak in the book that the shift is necessary. The, shift is, the shifting is necessary and lifting is mandatory. Uh, you, an individual have to understand that where we are now, uh, the climate is changing, the political climate, things are changing at a rapid uh, pace, that the shift cannot be an option. It must be a priority. And I believe that people really have to see themselves. I've learned something that we've spent so much time focusing on things that don't matter. And so many times we are so interested in building everybody else and being there for everybody else till we mm -hmm. deprive ourselves. Mm -hmm. The shift that we personally need, we can't experience it because we are not exerting that energy that we need on ourselves because we're depleted. It's been squandered because we've been there for everybody else. Uh, and, and, and we've done it for everybody else. We made it happen for everybody else. And I tell people, uh, and I actually was just ministering on this the other night in Savannah, that if you have it for everybody else and it's working for everybody else, if you use it for yourself, I promise you, it will work for you. I, I was just getting ready to ask you, what advice do you have for a person that's always giving advice, good advice to other people, but need some of the, that same advice for themselves? <laughs> Well, they, 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 they have to work it for themselves. Deuteronomy 8 and 18, man of God says that God give us power uh, to get wealth. And I believe so many times that uh, we're not experiencing change because we have become naive to the power that we really possess. And I believe that if we would unleash and unlock the power within us, we will see this change. Um, it is easy. And I would, I, I would say even because of human nature, we, it, it, we have a custom of just being here for everybody else. But the danger to that is that we neglect ourselves and, and, and we're not there for ourselves. So the things that we need, it's not happening for us. And so we are frustrated. Uh, we're disgruntled because when we look at us, what should be there is not really there. And so if they, if people would really unlock that power in them, and, and, I, and I've been telling the people, man of God, that this is an hour not for us to be selfish, but we have to be personal. We, mm -hmm. have to work, we need to be worked on. We need self-improvement. Uh, we, we've neglected ourselves. And, and a lot of time this deals with because we lack the knowledge of how valuable we really are, how significant we are. Uh, and when we realize our value, and when we realize how significant we are, we won't continue to waste our time for everything else, everybody else. We will realize that we need to use momentum to build ourselves for the better. That's good. How important is it for a believer to have a vision for their life? Oh God, that is, that is, it, is very, it is very important. It is very imperative. Uh, for the Bible said, without a, a vision of people perish, uh, people have to set goals. They, they have to do it. They, they don't have no God if they don't set no vision. They, they have nothing really to be accountable to. A lot of times we deal with accountability with being accountable to somebody. I believe in that. But there come a time we have to be accountable to ourselves. Even mm -hmm. Job said, I made a covenant with my own self. Sometimes we're not even accountable to ourselves. Uh, you, th that's what that vision does. The vision calls that vision calls personal accountability. Uh, it creates goals for yourself. Uh, the Bible said, "I've been." It, it's just fascinating that you even asked me that question. Psalms one twenty six and one says, "When I turn to captivity, 
of Zion, we would be like men that would dream it. And I want to say to, to, to you and to the listeners and to the viewers that, that are going to really hear this, that it's not a dream. Uh, the thing that they vision will become a reality, but it will not become reality if you don't monitor it, if you don't maintain it, and if you don't work the vision that you possess and that you have over your own life. I'm writing this down. You said monitor, maintain, and then work the vision. So Absolutely. let's talk about that. How does one monitor their vision? They, they monitor it by going back. When you have a vision and you, you establish that vision, when you monitor, you go back and you look at the vision to see, are you representing or resembling, should I say, the vision that you have for yourself? Maintaining, making sure that what you, the goals that you set for yourself is constantly happening. Avoiding uh, drama, avoiding people and things that have the tendency to impede that progress. Progress is vital to a vision because you can have a vision and it just become dormant if you don't have the necessary, if you do not make the necessary progress to make sure that vision uh, come to plans, come to flourishing. So if, if you don't do it, it's just going to be a vision and there's nothing going to happen. It's just going to be laying dormant. And, you'll, and I, often tell, I often say to people, your vision going to be saying, hello, have you forgot about me? I'm waiting. I, you know, I'm waiting. I'm just sitting here. So uh, that, that's one major way to make sure they maintain it. Uh, upkeep is important. Uh, really keeping up with what they say. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we will write it or we'll have it, but we don't keep up with it. We don't, we don't make sure that it is still what it's supposed to be. And we are going back to the thing that we set and the goals that we set for ourselves. Right. You know, there's a, um, some teaching out about the seven mountains of influence uh, in the earth. You know, you got the media mountain, you know, all those different mountains. And, um, Oftentimes, believers, especially people that have been in church, the height of their ambition is to become either a bishop or a pastor or something in the in the church. What is the danger of just saying, oh, I want to be a pastor? But they're saying that because it sounds good and it sounds real spiritual. But what they really want to be is an actor in Hollywood or a famous author or something like that. But they don't think that's spiritual enough. So they let those dreams die to try to take on a, a dream that they believe is more spiritual and more honorable and more godly. Man of God, I am, I am so honored that you asked that question. I promise you, it seemed like you was in one of my services last week. Uh -oh. <laughs> the danger with that, the church, uh, the church is in trouble in that regard because what have happened, and, and, I, and, I, and I know about the teachings of the seven mountains, I've dealt with it education, entertainment, family, finance, uh, that, that is a phenomenal teaching. But the danger is what we've done in the church, and I'm speaking even uh, on behalf of it because I'm a part of it, I represent the church as a prophetic voice. We pushed everybody just to be the next bishop or preachers. But what we need, I was in Jacksonville preaching and a traditional Baptist church, a pastor, was in my service and he came after hearing me preach on this same subject. That man came and hugged me and embraced me and said, you are a Pentecostal preacher that I would want to hear all the time because I've never heard a preacher, uh, may, even to go further than a prophet, deal with what you dealt with. I believe what we made the mistake is, is we pushed everybody to seminaries and theology school, but we didn't push them to be lawyers. We didn't push them to be judges. We didn't push them to be teachers. Uh, you, you are absolutely correct. It sounds to be spiritual, but what, what we miss is that God sent us to have marketplace ministry. And when we didn't cover this ground with teachers, even politically, you'll be surprised the many quote unquote uh, Christians who shun away from the political arena, but they are the ones that's making decisions. We're home in a prayer meeting we're not going to the city council meetings. We don't go to PTA meetings. We're not going to the school board meetings. So when these laws are established, we sit in there um, surprised and flabbergasted, but we were, where was our influence? The church must have an influence in the world. We must have, we have to have a seat at the table. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light, we're the salt of the earth and we're the light of the world. 
if our influence, uh, if, if we're not influence the world, then we're doing, we're doing the kingdom an injustice, to be honest with you. So I, I, and I have been encouraging, I was just talking to a pastor here recently, and I was telling them that we should even encourage those among us, make sure you go to school, uh, go get an education. They can come back to us and then it will enhance our ministry. But so, so many times we just want them to be, and, and you see this all on social media. Everybody is in the race to see who can be the next great Hooper, who can be the next. I just did with this in Savannah, man of God. I told him in Savannah, and I did with this even in Brooksville a few weeks ago. I, I think it is so asinine for prophets to tell people you're going to be the next Bishop Jake, so the next uh, prophet. No, we need prophetic voices to awaken who you are. We need the next you. We don't need another Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes. We don't need another Pastor Ron Parsley. We need the next shoot. And sometimes, and let me help you. You're going to scream on this. I, I, the Lord spoke this to me. I tweeted this uh, recently that we should never pursue identities that, that, that are not ours. And, and, and what you find happening is everybody is pursuing uh, an identity that don't even belong to them. <laughs> so who they are, they are not becoming. Because everybody want to be this, everybody want to be that, and nobody want to be an original them. So I'm, I'm even, I, I even encourage those that would hear this interview. Please, we need lawyers. Did you know the the the, the main fields that's upon us right now? And even and, and if I and if I could, uh, we as Christians and we us we that are African Americans are really gonna miss it if we don't wake it. Because the main fields now is engineers, science, uh, technology, mathematics. These are the four leading fields that is in the world right now. We have to be, we have to be better, more than just better preachers. And we need to be better than just great basketball players. We need to be judges. We need to be accountants. We need to be the next presidents. We need to be CEOs over major corporations and influence that sector as opposed to just staying in the corridor of the four walls and continue to shout, continue to praise God and doing it with on ourselves. We got to go out into the hedges and the highways and we got to influence them. All right. I was listening to a teaching of um, prophetic teaching and um, the teacher was exhorting the students to, you know, OK, it's good. You read your Bible. But I need you to get get some books on economics, get yes. some history. You know what I mean? So when you prophesy, you can have a totality Absolutely. of what you're prophesying about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, sir. That is that's true. Knowledge is so powerful. Uh, most people that know me, they know that when I even when I minister or I converse or I call for somebody, it is not just relating to the 66 books. I believe that we need to be versed beyond biblical knowledge. In fact, I'll never forget listening to a message from Bishop T.D. Jakes. Uh, and, and he enlightened me when I heard him saying this, that we need to learn other vernacular other than mm -hmm. church vernacular. Mm -hmm. We need to know certain language. We need to know business vernacular. Uh, we need to be influential. We need to be able to uh, uh, be able to function and operate beyond just the pool pit. Mm -hmm. And to do this, we have to gain that knowledge. We have to we we have to do it. We have to pursue it. And that is just important. We need to know mathematics. We need to and I think when, and I really believe that when we learn this, we can incorporate this into our messages and we're able to reach people and they will not see us just being spiritual in regards to just shouting and dancing, running around the church. We're gonna do that because that's what we're called to do. But we have to learn some other things too. All right. I just said, I just said on another um, broadcast. You know, when you go into the bank and you're going to do business, they don't want to hear about a high yard and a shata. They want to know about an income statement and a balance sheet. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Oh God. Yes, sir. yes, sir. All right. We're talking to Terry A. Weems Sr. He's the CEO of Terry A. Weems Ministries. You can visit him on the web at terryaweems. Org. His current book is titled Shifting and Lifting, uh, Engaging a Metamorpho. Our conversation today is how to shift your life, how to shift and lift your life 
to your greatest potential. This is the Assembly of Champions broadcast. We're gathering champions and giving you the tools and the ideas and the principles and the strategies you need to succeed. Um, you in the in the beginning we talked about goals. Let's 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 revisit goals. I know you have to have a vision, but after you have your your vision of what you want to do, you actually have to set some one, two, three, four, five um, goals and plans in order. What are some ways to set some godly goals? Oh God, and and I want to say too that that is phenomenal. Um, and, and and people need to know you need some short term and long term goals. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the goals that you can set is really where you want to be where, where are you trying to go in life now that won't happen if you don't know your purpose mm -hmm. i have been saying that people that don't know their purpose don't know their place mm -hmm. purpose is so significant uh to goal setting because you set goal you really should set goals based on your purpose in life let me, let me say this yes. I, I like this purpose thing um uh, let's talk about you know some people they're saying i don't know my purpose I don't know why God put me here on the planet. Well, let's start with first. The, the, um, um, I forget the, the actual name of it, but the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Yes. So that's purpose number one. Glorify God and enjoy him forever. So whatever you do, make sure that what that is, you're glorifying God and in the process, you're enjoying him forever. So let's start right there. We're going to glorify God. We're going to enjoy him forever. How important is it if you don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, go do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get up and go, Abraham, to a place that I will show you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so how important is it for us not to use I don't know my purpose as a as a uh, excuse to be lazy and oh, dormant? Because, see, if, 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 we, if we continue... If we continue to use that, we're not going to do anything. We won't do it. So it is, it is, it is uh, important for people to learn it, to do something. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, there's a familiar scripture that I love. He that loveth sleep will soon enter to poverty. Most people use that because they're lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and they use that as a crutch not to evolve or mm -hmm. not so that God would not be able to develop really what's in them. A lot of people that say they want to know their purpose really don't want to know it because with knowing their purpose, you're going to comes responsibility. Comes responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's very and then important. How important is it like if you if you don't know, go try stuff. Go and see, try stuff. see what you like, you know? And, and, and then most times, the thing that you like, most times you can discover your purpose by the thing that you really like to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you can really discover... That may not be in all instances, but in a, in a, in a, in a many instances, the thing that you really like doing, it, it, your purpose is somewhere in that. And you just have and going back to what I said earlier, man, just work it. You got to right. work it. You can't be lazy. You got to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. You, it, it's just, that's just a must. You know, when I was in uh, school, I got kicked out of, at first it was an embarrassment, but now I see that it was God's little way of tapping me on the shoulder and say, hey, fella, this is what you're supposed to be doing. But I got kicked out of kindergarten for talking and asking questions. Wow. Now, this is what I get to do all the exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> so sometimes even what has looked like was for your detriment actually can turn out for you good. That's, that's a good point because in that is your purpose. Right. So sometimes we are programmed not to see that. But That's even good. with what you say, that is vital because your purpose can be locked in that thing that you think is bad or mm -hmm. is, you know, derogatory, basically. And God, again, God will use that to awaken your purpose in you. That is true. Right. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's important for because actually a teacher um, later on down the line. Um, told me in high school, hey, you, you, you might want to think about joining the speech team. Now, I had never even thought about, I really didn't even know there was a speech team in my school. But she said, you might want to think about, because um, it's something about when we call you up to read, it's something about the way you read right. that right. other people just don't read like you read. Right. You might want to consider that. And so from there, it, when once I did it, it was like I was in a fish hopping in water. I'm like, wow, this is where I'm supposed to be all the time. Right. So, but had had someone not said, maybe you might think 
about doing this. Mm -hmm. And then even after them saying it, me not actually going to do it, I probably still wouldn't have walked into destiny and purpose for my life. That's true. That's true. So how yes. important is it for a prophetic voice to actually say, hey, you know, I see this gift in you. And then after the prophets, you know, many times the prophets do say, hey, I see this gift in you. And then you still like, well, I'm going to let me pray about it. Right. What? <laughs> right. That's good, too. That's good. See, I'm, I have some similarities in that, too, because from a child, uh, my mother just had to come back and apologize to me. She'd been in church all her life. And we, we, when I was taking her on a cruise for her birthday, she said, I'm sorry. She said, I did not know that there was a prophet in my womb. Mm. And she fought me, not in a bad way. I love we have a good relationship. But sometimes parents, sometimes parents um, are out of touch with the hand mm. of God that's on their children. Mm -hmm. And even with me, I, I, I fell in love with speaking from a child. I just, I just learned recently that when I was younger, I used to collect books. Mm -hmm. I used to collect books. I used to always like, what, what was that telling me? I was attracted to knowledge. Mm -hmm. and even you and I was uh, conversing earlier about uh, how I used to recite the uh, Dr. MLK speech in high school. And I did, well, I really didn't deviate because I, 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 I've been speaking for 25 years, preaching, traveling here, then everywhere. But I did not know until even, re even recently how my desire is to social uh, issues, uh, things because I've researched. I'm up two, three o'clock in the morning researching, learning things even about my history, about Christianity, who we are, and just so much. But it really started in my childhood. Mm -hmm. And what have to happen sometimes is we need people to be able to see it and recognize it, and can help direct us into that way. That's good. Yes. Talking to Terry A. Weems Sr., we're talking about how to shift and lift our lives to our greatest potential. Does God really want us to reach our greatest potential or he just want us to get saved and come on to heaven? Oh, my God. Man of God, the, the desire of God is for, for us to reach our potential. That's what we're here for. We are here to reach the potential. Now, you're going to fall in love with this. I was in Ocala last Sunday, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm referring back because everything that we're discussing, in the last six months, I've been uh, releasing it, uh, imparting it from church to church. And I said to the church, Soul Harvest in Ocala Sunday, that we are so busy trying to get to heaven mm. that we refuse to be equipped for earth. Mm. We were put in the earth for a purpose. Right, right. We were put, <laughs> yes, we were put in the earth to fulfill a particular assignment. And so many people, going back to value, mm -hmm. they are existing, but they are not living. In wow. this book, that, that, that Shifting and Lifting, I had to make mention of the late Dr. Miles Monroe. He said a profound statement just before he uh, went to be with the Lord. He said, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but it is a life that does not know their purpose. Mm -hmm. A life that is in the earth, wasting away their talents, wasting away their dreams, uh, connected to the wrong people, connected to the wrong leaders who don't have the ability to stimulate the plan of God in their life. God wants us to reach our uh, potential. That's why he give us instructions and guidelines in the Holy Writ. He teaches us how to add. Uh, one thing that really disappoints God is when we're stagnant because we do not worship a stagnant God. God himself, they'll learn it they, as they purchase this book. God himself is forever shifting. He's forever moving. He's forever doing things. And we have to be sensitive to him. So many people notice this man of God. They feel like they can't reach their potential because they're tired. But oh, can Prophet Weems talk to you today to tell you that even an ass was tired. But Come on. Jesus saw the potential of an ass. Right. I better quit. I better quit. I better quit. I better quit. He saw the potential. He saw. And, and, and you know, man of God, uh, I, I want to say this. A lot of time we are we are encountering hostility because of our potential. I was I was coming through Richmond, Virginia, flying on a jet, and the Lord said, You don't get it. I say, Don't get what? You know, I was going through like all of us. And uh, he said, you don't get why you have enemies and people rise up against you. It's not so much about who you are now, 
they can sense your potential. Your potential yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Mm. And if they can stop, if they can get you not to believe that you possess the potential that you do, you will not make the necessary adjustments to be who God have called you to be. So potential is so powerful and um, you can do it because it's in you. He won't, God wants us to reach it. So it's time to get busy and right. make it to your, you know, to fulfill your potential. Right. Well, you know, the, the, the job of the enemy of your soul is to kind of cut you off before you get to potential. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, yeah the enemy of your soul. It's the enemy in us. Right. Yeah. The inner me. <laughs> the inner me. The inner me. Right. Indeed. Absolutely. Right. All right. Talking to Terry A. Weems Sr. We're talking about how to shift and lift our lives to our greatest potential. We talked about having a vision. We talked about goals. We talked about um, purpose. How about, you know, the, the scripture declares that you can use, you know, so many people have their different interpretations of what the script, this particular scripture means. But um, typically, the scripture says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. Um, some scriptures say a man's bribe, a man's money. But in terms of gift, meaning talent or resource, uh, how important is it to just work our gift and allow God to bring it? I believe every gift has an ordained audience for it. How important is it to just work the gift and allow God to bring the ordained audience for you? You work it because that's what that's what you were that's what you were given the gift for. Uh, it's important to know that God didn't give it for you to waste it mm -hmm. or for it to remain dormant in you. Mm -hmm. He gave it to you to utilize. He gave it to you to work it. So that, that's 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 the whole purpose of multiplication. That's right. the whole purpose of increase. Your gift, your gift, your that ability. That word gift can be uh, interpreted for your 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 that uh, ability. Those qualities in you. It's gonna make room for you. It's gonna make room for you because you gonna you gonna work it. And as you work it, it can't help but to make room for you. Right. Because it's gonna it's gonna force that type of change every day of your life. So it is it's very important to work it because if you don't work it, if you don't work it, it's going to become to nothing. It's going right. to be sitting there stagnant. It will die. It will it will be unattended and it and, and, and nothing going to happen. And then in, in the in the end result, it's going to create silent frustrations mm -hmm. and aggravations mm -hmm. on the inside with yourself. And there are so many people, oh God, man of God, there are so many people that are angry and frustrated at themselves. And sometimes, rightfully to say, when people don't have anybody to provoke them, I was talking to a pastor uh, in Pasco County here, when you don't have nobody to really provoke you, a positive, this is the importance of having positive voices in your life. People that can see past your uh, proclivities and can really help you to get to that next place that God have called you to be. And I wanna say this, if I may, it won't happen if you do not get delivered from two spirits that I've been dealing with, stagnation and procrastination. Stagnation and procrastination are the enemy to success. Uh, many people is not experiencing successful living because of stagnation and procrastination. Oh, God. And, and oftentimes, stagnation and procrastination is hidden under, desire, under the disguise of let me pray about it. <laughs> oh, God, absolutely. Because sometimes let me pray about it is people's way of telling you they're not ready uh, to pursue it or go after it. Right. Yeah, that, that's good, too. That is very good. Yes, sir. All right. Quick question. Um, how important is it for, let's, you were talking about different voices and, and having people speak in your life. If you don't have the inspiration, motivation, um, cultivation, so many vations, activation. We can just go on and on and on. In your surrounding, how important is it to, to, to get out and just go? Get, get in your car, take a train, a bus, and go somewhere and get out of the current environment so that you can see the possibilities of another potential. Listen here, a part of this book I talk about where God will uh, escort you out of environments. It is so important uh, to get some time out of your environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus go to a place called Bethesda and he finds a blind man. Mm -hmm. Now what is fascinating about this particular passage of scripture, 
the blind men before him was never taken out of the city. What was so mm. uh, so uh, important for Jesus to take this particular blind man out of the city? Because sometimes people's deliverance won't come until they are removed out of their environment. Mm. Environment play a very significant role in people's deliverance in people's motivation. So you have to you you have to get out your environment. Sometimes change is not coming because people won't be disconnected from their environment. Because the, the saying is true. We are a product of our environment. You know, we, we're a product of it. And sometimes not intentionally, but people can conform to the environment that they have been so used to uh, abiding in because it can absorb in you and you can get so to a point and you'd be like, where in the world did this come from? So yeah, sometimes they just need to get away. If they don't have, they just need to get away. And, and then sometimes even with getting away, uh, be attracted to something. That's, 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 that's one of the main points I put in this book that we have to be attracted to the things that can improve our life. Mm -hmm. So many people, so many people, lives are not improved because they are not attracted to the things. I did a, I did a teaching uh, one year in Bradenton, and I talked about, I, 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 in the teaching I dealt with, that if you want to be financially empowered, change the TV shows that you look at. Stop looking at, stop looking at Jerry Springer, and start looking at Susie Orman. Start looking at, start looking at shows that can empower you in that area. If you want to be, if you want to be uh, empowered in your marriage, be connected to strong marriage people, and the list go on and on and on and on and on. So a lot of times we are not attracted to the thing um, that can really improve our life. So you you got you got to you you need to surround yourself with positive and healthy things that can continue to in you in your date your life for the better. You know. <laughs> You know what? When I was heading toward 250 pounds, I started following people on like Twitter and Instagram, like people that's you know into muscles and and, and lean and thing. And so they, you know they posted pictures of their abs and all that stuff. So at first it used to tick me off, <laughs> but then it's like okay now. And then they started. If you follow people, they they, they kind of share their secrets. You know, I used to see people, um, some of them juicing. Mm -hmm. When they would go out to eat, you know, when I would go out, I would just order whatever I just really liked on the menu. I saw the things that they uh, ordered on the menu, mm -hmm. and it kind of changes in your subconscious, and you start kind of modeling what you see. Right. And so, you know, I came on down from 249, and now I'm a little closer to 200. But right. that happened because I started seeing different. When you see different, you act different. Because And, and, and that was because a an attraction right. awakening up in you. And I talked about that. I just dealt with finances of marriage, but even health. Mm -hmm. People, you know, that's why this book was not geared around just a churchy environment. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to make sure it reached people of all cultures, all habits, all mm -hmm. customs. If, if, if you really want to see improvements in your health, connect yourself with healthy things, how right. to eat healthy. Uh, vegetables, uh, how to lay off certain foods. I'm, I'm smirking because I can really go into that. Because most times when you start talking about people's food, they get mad with you. Mm -hmm. But that is so important. And that's all part of the shift process. And find you a skinny doctor. <laughs> yes. But that's another, yes. another yes, story. Absolutely. A healthy <laughs> that will really impart that into you so that, again, you would, you would, you would see the results that you're looking for. All right. I had to. I I joked with the doctor. I was like, you, you know, you too big. I can't come up in here no more because I'm I'm big. You big. This is something not working. <laughs> so Absolutely. I have to find me a skinny doctor. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Talking to Terry A. Weems Senior. Uh, he's the author of Shifting and Lifting: Engaging in Metamorpho. Uh, you can visit him on the web at terryaweems.org, talking about shifting and lifting our lives to our greatest potential. Now, someone may be listening to our conversation today and think. You know, like, well, why are they talking about having a vision and a goal and and um, um, eating right and and and, and uh, marriage and finance and all that kind of stuff? Um, 
how important is it that we c consistently, because you can't listen to this kind of talk one day mm -hmm. and think it's going to stick. How, how important is it to consistently engage your mind and your thought processing processes, processes in conversations and teaching that go against the normal grain of what you normally hear? Because it's going, because it's going to constantly feed you. Um, if you feed it, it grows. If you feed it, it's going to grow. And if you starve the areas that you don't want to grow, they'll die. Mm -hmm. So that constant voice will create a energy, a positive energy on the inside. And what is it going what, to, what, what's going to happen is a self-motivation and momentum is going to develop in you. And you're going to start finding yourself desiring the shift. So in act, you're right. It can't be just a one-time broadcast that you hear. You have to constantly. Now, it takes work. One of my chapters in the book is work in progress. And I really deal with how work is essential to progress. Mm -hmm. You won't see progress if you're not willing to work. You have to work. You have to work on yourself. And again, I got to refer back to this. It deals with your value. It's in it, the reason what makes it important is because there's a you in the individual that have not even come out of them yet. Mm. And if they want that you in them to come out, if they're tired, then they will make the appropriate change. Now, let me let me also say this because I did a wonderful live Facebook this week. Uh, and I think I dealt with a podcast on this as well. The prodigal son did not see change until he came to himself. But in all of my years of preaching this, I missed one part after that. The Bible said he came to himself and said, mm -hmm. Sometimes we are having conversations with the wrong people. We need to be having conversations with ourselves. We need mm -hmm. to tell ourselves, self, you're going to get out of this situation. You're mm -hmm. going to get out of this predicament. And the Bible says, and, and, when I, and when God showed me this week in Savannah, I said, God, I could have put this in the book. But this may, be, this may be part two. The Bible said he spent all on righteous living. That word righteous living means uncontrollable, unbalanced, undisciplined, mm -hmm. ugly. Mm -hmm. When you live that way, you're going to do whatever you want to do. But when you come to yourself and you begin to say, words are, in, words are important as well for shifting. Because if you start speaking to it, matter of fact, let me just give them just a little quick prophetic nugget. The next level of change is in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Or you just open your mouth and start speaking to it. And if you keep speaking to it and you keep saying it, eventually you're going to believe what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know. So you got to change that negative energy and generate positive energy. But you got to come to yourself because if you don't come to yourself, it ain't going to happen. We can talk till we blue. They got to be willing and, and to come to their self. They got to recognize that what they're doing is not working. And until they face that reality, it won't take place. How important is it to go put yourself in the environment, even before you can be there consistently, but go put yourself in the environment of where you want to go? I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, one of my mentors asked me, I think it's either eight or nine, have you ever had a multi-course meal? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't know. <laughs> but he was like, oh, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where you go sit down in a restaurant that you got to put a shirt and tie on and some nice shoes right. and let them do multiple courses and you know what utensils to use when to drink all that and i you know i was like well no no that's he said you need to go sit because where you're going you're going to be in those environments all the time and you don't want to look like a like you're a stranger or a pilgrim in a strange land Absolutely. how important is it to go put yourself in, in environments where you want to be ultimately you know why because you become a product of what you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. So if you be, when you become exposed to it, you become the product of it. So, and then when you, when you, when you enter those environments, you absorb that. Mm -hmm. energy. You become, uh, you become, the word is acclimated. Mm -hmm. so we are not acclimated to where we want to go. We don't, okay, now you made a, you made a, ph a phenomenal, uh, metaphor just now when you were dealing with that. Why was it important for why was it important for uh, David to connect with Jonathan? 
Mm. Jonathan had to prepare him for where he had never been used to being. Mm -hmm. Jonathan was used to being in the palace. Mm -hmm. It was not. Mm -hmm. And see, not, not to talk about, not to discuss that, we have to tell people that's the danger of fighting people that God sends to prepare you for your next. Mm -hmm. Because some places that we're going, we've never been before. Mm -hmm. And how do you know how to handle it? How do you know how to live in it? Uh, that is, but that is so, ooh, God, I have to stay on that one point that you just made for third, because everybody keeps saying, I'm going to the next level. How you going? You're not prepared for it. You don't even know how to dress in certain environments, because certain environments, you and I know this, that certain environments uh, require you to have a different appearance, a different look, and you can't consider somebody controlling you. That's just a part of it. And if you don't know that, you won't be able to operate in it. So once you go into that environment and you can, because seeing is believing. And some, sometimes people have to see it. And when they see it, now, let me deal with seeing. Sometimes they won't see it because they have the wrong people around them that's impairing their vision. Mm. So they have to remove the, 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 the vision blockers, people that's trying to block their vision so that they can get into, they can adapt to the, that's the word, adapt to the right environment. So they will become, watch this, they will become where they're going. Oh God! Right. Oh God. That's, good. <laughs> That's good. Oh, you know what? Even a, a, this is just a, another small example. Um, I was I got in a um, a friend's vehicle, mm -hmm. and um, they needed to work. I think they needed to work on something. They say, "Hey, will you drive while I while I work?" I say, "Oh, okay." So me trying to act like I have driven a, a luxury vehicle before, <laughs> or, right. or, or uh, another kind of vehicle. So I get in. And so I'm trying to start the start it. No clue. <laughs> right, right. Didn't know how to put it in, in reverse. So they was like, "You've never driven a German vehicle before?" Wow. <laughs> I was like, "No, sir." So of course they had to give me a quick tutorial on how to drive a a German vehicle. But uh, he said, "Now this is preparing you for when you come up at your Honda, <laughs> you gonna know how to drive something right. different." Right. So right. yeah, people be talking about I'm gonna name and claim, you know, whatever, but you don't even know you have you test driven one before. Have you have you put yourself in you know in the environment of where you wanna go? Right. Have That's you lived in a have you even walked in a mansion before? Right. Absolutely. You're not even prepared for it. Right. You saying you're gonna be a multi millionaire, but you don't even have a bank account. Come on, where's that money gonna go? <laughs> you have no vision for that many. You right. got that money. You, you still have to pay money. at the check cash in place. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Man, this is, man, the time went by so fast. This has been good. Um, talking today about how to shift and lift your life to your greatest potential with Terry A. Weems Sr. Visit him on the web at terryaweems.org. That is T E R R T E R R Y A W E E M S dot or get a copy of his book from his website or go to Amazon, Shifting and Lifting, Engaging a Metamorpho. Any final thoughts and comments for the listeners of Assembly of Champions? Listen, I want to thank you, Pastor. I want to thank you for reaching out to me, uh, connecting with me and having me a part. I pray that our listeners uh, will hear what was discussed and they will make a decision. That's the, the, the best decision that they will ever make is investing in themselves. And I tweeted today, I was waiting, I kept looking for this, uh, even in the name of your uh, broadcast. Ten hours ago, I, t I tweeted, coming out of Savannah, the champion in you is birthed from the challenges you endured and you conquered. Come on now. <laughs> Touch your name and say confirmation. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All right. All right, Terry A. Weems Sr., thank you for investing your time and your information in the listeners of Assembly of Champions. The pleasure is mine, sir. All right, and bless you for tuning in.